Okay. Hey everybody. Um, I'm Don. Hey Don. Hey. hey. You guys want to do the Lionel Richie thing? Oh, oh, oh. oh nice. Oh, okay. So here we go. Um, I'm, I'm going to kind of wing this one a little bit. Um, I don't have slides. I just want to talk about something we're doing and see if folks are interested. And it's going to be a call to help. And what we're trying to do is make things um, not suck. Um, so, how many of you have been to docs.ansible.com recently? Awesome, yeah. That's kind of how many of you think it sucks? I mean, not the docs. Not the docs. I mean, just like the HTML. Couldn't do that to JP. <laughs> yeah. No. Do you want to kind of like, you mean the landing page versus the individual? I do mean the landing page and kind of the experience and the navigation and trying to find your way into the documentation and yeah. what you're doing and there are all these like projects and you know what is there's this card that's like community and then there's so that's what I mean just to clarify I'm kind of short on sleep and like I said I'm winging it so um, when I started with Ansible, um, which wasn't so long ago, I'm probably one of the people in the room that's like newest to the project and like using it. And I just started with like, you know, what is this? Um, I had heard about Ansible. I had a rough idea, but I didn't know that much detail. So I went to the docs and I tried to find like some kind of like getting started. Um, I was looking for like kind of I came from like the JBoss side and I was looking for like some kind of hello world sort of thing and just you know how can I get in like five minutes start using Ansible and just you know boom let's go. Um, so what I found was that there was like some kind of like intro to Ansible in the community docs. It took me to a Red Hat video that didn't load and didn't play, and there was a link from that video that took me somewhere back to Ansible docs that didn't provide anything and um, so it's like you know this massive barrier and um i don't know it's just hard to get in and like there was you know um kind of a bad user experience so what this talk about what i'm going to talk to you about today is how we're going to try and um, fix some of that and provide um better navigation and I think the Ansible docs are great. There's a lot of like really, really, really solid content there. Um, but the problem is getting to that content, I think, when you need it. So what we're doing, um, we've started this community um, issue. Uh, you can, you know, of course, dive in and share your thoughts. And we'd love to hear from everyone and get as much, get as many voices into this and totally let, you know, the community um, direct us um, on mapping user journeys for the Ansible doc site. And so kind of the thing we're starting with, I'm going to go back over here and look at this. Um, this is talking about um, is doc site personas. Text size of both. Yeah. Let's see if I can do that without us. The yeah. it should be in your own mode. The eye. The eye. Yeah, the eye. Let me do that. There we go. That's better. Can everyone see that? Okay. Yep. yep. All right. And this is in a HackMD that's also linked from that issue, so you can kind of find everything there. Um, so the doc site personas. So a persona, it's just kind of a description of a user. Um, someone who, I was going to say a user who's using it, yeah, it's kind of redundant. Um, but a persona is just sort of a tool to help you identify and... Um, Sorry, just one second, we need the new live stream link. It's so the same link, right? It should be the same. And that one's just coming up as a recording. <coughs> But yeah, it seems to be stuck here as well. Maybe my network is, yeah, I think my network login timed out. Wait, there's more line already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
Entonces déjame ver si no es la canción para el otro. Great Wi-Fi here. Streaming again. Try again. Uh, okay. Let's see. this work, especially around the scriptability, um, and then the age, the age. I think it's running again. Okay. Yeah. And we should have low latency mode now, so less delay. the link to uh, Carol. Uh, <coughs> it ends with uh, 7U, so I don't know if it's the same as it was previously, but... No. working here as well. Okay, so we're back. Hey, everybody. Um, we're back. So, 
As I was saying, um, Persanas give us a representation of the various users that uh, visit docs.ansible, mm -hmm. and we're trying to improve the experience by making the navigation and the layout, how you get to the documentation, um, more based around user journeys and user needs rather than the projects. Like if you go to docs.ansible, you can see the ecosystem page, you know, see molecules, see the SDK, see, you know, all the great projects and links to their documentation. But most users don't start with a the project. They start, you know, trying to solve a problem or automate something or, you know, they've got a task. So um, the person is here. Uh, we just kind of go through them, like, super quickly. Um, you know, the idea has been to keep them barely light and just focus on um, their needs, their attitude, and their knowledge, and kind of what they're doing, and those things determine. Um, so get in here, so I can scroll down. Um, Okay, so we've got a novice user, total newbie, you know, that one's kind of wide open. Um, I think there's less of a user journey with that one. It's kind of like, you know, what is Ansible and someone who's becoming aware and evaluating um, Ansible and then, you know, where they go from there. Um, and you can see, like, we're, you know, we're looking at the, the need, so like, what does that persona need from the content um, to succeed with their goals? Um, the attitude, which influences the verbosity of content and the type of content um, as well. Like, you know, if it's somebody who's like the novice, you know, they want to understand things quickly. Small, fr small obstacles become super frustrating. Um, so. Um, and the knowledge. This one, it's kind of undetermined because, you know, it could be somebody who's like systems architect or it could be someone who's kind of a hobbyist. Um, but the, you know, the knowledge can help you determine the level of expertise and kind of more the type of content. So we've identified the novice, the user, um, is someone who's writing content um, and can extend out into um, operations and um, various different paths. Um, the developer, someone who's like writing plugins, modules, um, in Python or some other programming language. Um, operations, which I did mention, it's kind of a subset of users, but I think it's a distinct set of needs that operations personas would have. Um, you know, it's my um, deploying AWX or, you know, those, those Galaxy. Okay. And we have a community maintainer and community member evangelist. And starting, starting with these personas, um, they're not set in stone. We'd love to hear your thoughts. We'd love to hear your comments. Um, if you want to you know, add to this, if you disagree, um, just looking at these now, I might take a moment and ask if there are any questions or comments on these personas. Any thoughts? Is that all of them, or is there any more? Like if you... That's all of them that we identified right now for, for the doc site. Okay. So I... I draw, I draw a distinction between a maintainer and like a contributor or a developer. Mm -hmm. I don't know what shape or form this would take as in terms of persona, but like if you're someone that is maintaining a collection, the flow of the, the workflow of doing this is different than someone that spotted a bug in a collection and right. wants to contribute a patch, right? right? So I didn't 
see that come across in one of those personas, um, um, unless you would, you know, it, would, it could be a community member perhaps, but so that's, you know, my thoughts. Yeah, yeah, no, no, totally. And, you know, there's one of the things that I realized kind of like while we're doing this is, you know, I don't have the right answers for this. I feel like this is how we can get to improving the doc site and you know improving that navigation and helping lower the barrier to entry and users connect to the docs. But I definitely need feedback like that. Mm. Just kind of summarize it's because David's not Mike, so. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. The so distinction between maintainers and. Yeah, the question from David was about the distinction between maintainers and um, right. contributors, and yeah, like you know. Um, Yeah, just yeah. Yeah, for those other stream here. Yeah, thanks. What, what do you need from us? What, what are the next steps? Um, we need feedback. We need, um, you know, it would be great to hear what people think about the personas. If you, you know, if you see things that aren't clear, if you, if you think there are more distinctions. And also, the next thing that we are doing, and this is something that I'm sharing that it's just, I've been scribbling this out. This isn't something that like, you know, um, we're doing anything with, but this is kind of how I see this progressing to kind of a next step. Um, you know, you see there's lots of stuff missing. And like, I think that reflects some of the lack of my knowledge, frankly, and not, not being able to see that. And what I would love to do is talk to anyone, everyone who can contribute to this and help me map out those user journeys a little bit more. And that's, that's, that's what we see here. Like if I can zoom in on this. Um, this is one that actually like see it over here and I uh, were kind of working on with the user, you know, like, so like the user writes playbooks, you know, they might, they might ask, um, you know, how do I make things reusable? Um, how do I make my automation consistent? Or, you know, how do I share my automation? Um, so working with this mind map, and actually, does anybody know a good mind mapping tool that's online and open source? And I've been using this one, someone on the team suggested it, but um, is it, you know, a limit to the people that can, you know, share and interact with that. So it'd be great to have a better option that, you know, we could get input from everybody. But this is what we're doing. We've got our personas. We're starting to map out those user journeys. And then the next step, which I hope people will like and be a bit more fun, um, I've created this repo. And you might love it. You might hate it. If you hate it, I want to know. Um, I want to know if you hate it more than if you love it, and let's make it better, and let's make it not suck, and this is something I did in like a day or two, so it's not like super good, but you know, um, it's just kind of my um, idea of how we can make docs.ansible.com better. Um, so using, the idea is using um, Jinja, and you know, just simple static site generator, and you know, generating the, the, the HTML landing pages that like includes those user journeys and connects to the content. And you can see here, if I open this tab, da, da, da. This, is, this is what I've come up with. You know, might be awful, I don't know. Um, let me know, but you know, there's you know, kind of a nice copy the clipboard thing. If you want to go over here and follow that link, um, you know, it takes you to that page that tells you a little bit more about Ansible if you want to, like, do getting started, and you can click here. Uh, it goes to the getting started content that we put in there recently. And, you know, so each of those users has a kind of specific, each of those personas has a specific section with kind of like the top links and helps you, like, navigate through to connect to the content that you need. Um, and this repo, I just called it the Ginger Doc site. It's there. It's in the Ansible org. Please fork it. Send us your improvements. Yeah. I uh, love your mind map of the user journeys. Um, that's 
that's just positive feedback I have. Right before you brought it up, I was thinking, okay, we've got these personas. How do you, how do we track how someone, or how do we encourage someone to move from a novice to a user and a user to a developer? And I think your user journeys are great. Thanks, it's good. I mean, it's good to get positive. To your point, it's also interesting to, I'm going to try and project a little bit for the audio. Um, it's also interesting to think about how someone can be in one path in one part of the project on a different path in a different part of the project, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it all kind of makes a horrible mess of everything, all the time. <laughs> but we got, we've got to do it, right? It's, it's yeah, I, I think once we see that, and just for the folks at home watching on the live screen, Henderson thinks it's awesome. So. Like, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. And you know, it's it's it, to be clear, it's not you know my work. It's everyone. You know, Andre on the team suggested the mind map. I was looking for that, and you know, I've just been getting stuff from other people. So I feel like it's moving in the right right direction, and this is you know what we need to do. We need to understand the user journeys in the community and how people in the community. Um, Please finish. No, it's just you know, it's all. This is all for you know people in the community. We want to take that back. We want to take docs.ansible.com that I think was kind of taken away from the community. And if you look at it now, you can see there's some downstream stuff. And that's fine. I think there's a... Have you talked about the new repo? So the docs repo is open now. So that's right. Yeah, the docs site repo is open now. Um, yeah, I think once we... That's the... Um, Gundola made the point that the Ansible docs site repo. Um, we opened that up. Um, it was private before, but that just contains the HTML and all the assets that go into docs.ansible. Um, so I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have no particular opinion on the Jinja approach to building the website, uh, though I suspect one of the challenges would be keeping up with the changes you know, across versions, the links they change. There is I, I, I seem to recall there's somewhere a list of, a massive list of redirections that is very hard to yeah. keep up. So um, maybe something to keep in mind as you work on this, how, how will I keep up, you know, how will I keep the links fresh? Um, so. Yeah, and the, I, I was thinking about that, and in this doc site, if I can find it, there should be, I thought this is a good data directory. Is that? Yeah, I'm done, I yeah, so there are, is there a links one in here? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like putting all the, I think by like trying to point to latest would be, um, you know, we always, I guess, want to, maybe not always, but you know, usually we want to like take people to the latest version of the docs, just for the folks. Um, you know, on the stream, the, you know, their, their, their comment was about making sure that we don't wind up with a bunch of like broken links or like pointing people to the wrong space. And like my idea to try and tackle that is have all the links in that one YAML doc that gets pulled in with the Jinja. Um, you know, trying to keep it like really simple and just use Jinja, YAML, Python, static site generator. It's a valid point that we don't want to like, you know, reinvent the wheel, I guess, and create our own static site generator that's super complicated because there's a lot of great options out there. But I don't think we need things with that many bells and whistles, you there, know, and just keep it. There was a an ignite talk this week about over engineer over engineering a static website. Yeah. We don't want to do that. No, no, yeah, no, we don't don't want to do that. Yeah, no. and I agree with that. I think you, it would further, you know, fragment, you know, community if we chose to use, I don't know, you know, the latest thing you go for static pages, right? I mean, right. Ansible, you know, if we can do the thing with, you know, the, the tools that we have, I think we should just use them. Yeah. Thanks, Ricky. Yeah, and I agree. And that's kind of what I've been trying to do with this is just keep, you know, meet people where they're working, you know, Jinja, YAML. Um, a bit of Python. You will be um, way more contributions by just sticking to the ecosystem things that we have, in my opinion, than just jumping into the latest, you know, hype thing. 
Yeah, and I looked, I did look at a lot of options like Astro, and, you know, the, like, like Jekyll, but you know, I'm not going to go into a room full of Python developers and say, hey, let's use Ruby. You know, <laughs> right. no, nobody, want, nobody wants to hear that. I'm just going to some static. Is that Made of battery giant. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what's going on there. I don't know. All right, yeah. Is it? Can you still hear me? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, Gundel, I think you. So I'm, I'm, don't shoot me, but I'm just going to try a devil's advocate. Yeah, please. Because I'm thinking about all these things you've got. The other way is we go and use the Sphinx and RST, and then you've got the, the inter-Sphinx drill yeah. time between sides. Mm. So I know it's bigger and complicated, but it's the same thing we're using in other parts of the box. I don't know if it makes sense, I've only thought of it just now, but I'm just going to... I mean, yeah. I could buy that, you know, Sphinx RST, because it's kind of, you know, the Python... Yeah, yeah. So it's what, what we use. Stuff. What I think it would be not a good thing, Jekyll, yeah. Ruby, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. MKDocs would be a good fit there, because you can write plain markdown, you can have HTML templating, mm -hmm. and then you get for free plugins to, like, render... Uh, Diagrams or to put like alerts in, in, the, in the markdown rendering. And also, you get internationalization easily for multiple languages if it's required. So, basically, the same as Sphinx. The same as Sphinx, but I think it's less complicated in my experience. I worked a lot with Sphinx, but I think it's more like you just put a bunch of markdown in a directory, you configure it, and you generate the site. Yeah. And have less features. Uh, less features, yeah. <laughs> more, could, uh, yeah. more complicated and even less features and you depend on and the test them. Right all. Yeah. Oh yeah, so make a PDF. Uh-huh, make a PDF. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, there, there are a lot of options. MK Docs is, is, is an option. And we, you know, I've, I've taken a look at that and I thought it might be a good idea. And if that's what the community wants to use and that's, if that's the best tool for the job, hey, I just, this is just uh, trying to. We are using MK Docs in Galaxy documentation. Yeah. We are using also in the DevTools. Yeah, yeah, Soren is, yeah. yeah. And MK Docs looks like a good solution, but I did wonder if it might be a little too much if we're just having like a couple of like pages for the layout to start with. You know, I'm just trying to start like with the simplest thing that I could find that would, you know, get things going. Get in two years, once we do this, what do you imagine the site would look like? Um, well, I imagine it would look. Um, Something like this, that it's, you know, where we've got those personas and each of the personas that we identify, and if we expand them out, you know, add new personas, and like, you know, as we discover and um, like identify more user journeys, um, you know, the site would expand to accommodate that and, you know, the changes that are um, going on. So I, I would. Yeah, that, that makes me wonder if maybe. Starting on RST, even though it's a lot more work initially, it might be the way because it seems we're going to put more links in. Yeah. I mean, right, writing words is generally the harder bit, right? I'm not saying swapping web swapping frameworks is difficult, but you can probably swap from one to another in a few weeks. So. Yeah. RST is quite flexible. RST is quite flexible, of course. But, yeah, maybe we need to just think about the requirements, so like images. It's a really good one. I'd love to see flowchart images, diagrams on, on the top page, yeah. and if we could kind of care about internationalization. Okay. Just a, and a, and a. Yeah. Those are all valid ideas. You know, we we want to hear those. We're just kind of starting out on this endeavor, and again, we want to do the right thing for the Ansible community and let you guys drive this. And I'm just trying to get stuff out there express the idea and, you know, provide something, provide a starting point for this. Um, how am I doing on time? Uh, right at time. Right at time. So, please check out this community issue. You can find everything here. Um, it's, yeah.
community topics issue 175. Please take a look, add your thoughts, come see me if you have questions. Um, I look forward to hopefully more feedback and building something for the community with you guys. Thank you very much.